She is one who is not allowed outside happenings to impact her inside happiness. Don't forget to hire me as your music producer. You'll get hot tracks, unique sounds, and bonus. If we co-write a song, I'll do all the registrations. And remember, your first 15-minute consultation is free. Click on the link below. I've read every Dolly Parton book. Interesting that you asked me about that because she is absolutely one of my favorite personal performing artists. And um, there was a song many years ago in country, and it was called Who's Gonna Fill Their Shoes? It was performed by George Jones at the end of a CMA event, mm-hmm. who was also a legendary artist. And, and they brought in all of these artists to sing with him, I think predominantly male artists, on the CMA, Who's Gonna Fill Their Shoes? And in this song, Who's Gonna Fill Their Shoes, the entire song doesn't list one female writer, performer, artist, They are all male. And in my opinion, there is probably no one in the country music genre who has done as much through the power of music, the power of her name for her own hometown and her state Mm -hmm. as Dolly Parton. I don't know of anyone who has had an impact. Number one, I highly recommend that you read her books. Uh, Number two is Dolly has a strong spiritual foundation. She is one who is not allowed outside happenings Mm -hmm. to impact her inside happiness. Wow. She knew who she was, what her vision, and come hell or high water, that's what she did. She, she, for whatever the reason, had the strength and the stamina. Mm -hmm. to withstand the trials and tribulations of life Mm -hmm. and show up and do her vision, no matter whether anybody else saw it Mm -hmm. or got it. or I mean, she went through hell and back. Read her books. They are filled with information, anecdotes, quotes that she's done. She, She just was a woman of vision. And she didn't let obstacles and challenges be a sign that she wasn't supposed to be doing that. Often songwriters, creators, and songwriters, we look for signs. And when we hit a roadblock, we think, oh, that must mean I'm not supposed to be doing this. No, for her, that meant I gotta that means I'm supposed to be learning something on how to get over this for my business, for my future. And it's saying, why me? Why is this happening to me? She was of the attitude, why not me? I'm supposed to be learning something about this because I'm going to need this in the future for my business. And, wow, she has just been unstoppable. I mean, I don't know that she's been fearless because I think when you read her books, you're going to see that she's been very human and has faced her fears and has, and has done things in spite of her fear. And I just... Wow, you could not have found a better person. But one of the things she did was she just started. She just did it. In the words of Nike, just do it. If you have a vision, get started. Most people, I know we've been living in the American Idol world or the voice world for the past 16 years, but or America's Got Talent. But the truth is, most people do not jump from their living room To a stage, even many of the American Idol people have been in professional shows nationwide, and that's why they moved up was because they've been doing it for years. They've been out on the road or touring or that kind of thing. So, you know, you don't have to have it all together, and you don't have to be perfect. A lot of people wait until, oh, once I get this and when I get this, and there's always something else they need to get started. That's self-sabotaging. So please read Dolly's books. I think maybe, um, I think maybe, and this is probably you're so thorough, a more important thing is how can I begin Mm -hmm. to generate an income as an artist writer and as a writer? 
how can I begin to, how can I begin my journey um, and begin getting real results? Because there is a big difference in being busy and being productive. And you and I have talked about that before. A lot, a lot of people are busy, but they're really, you know, they're not doing things that are totally connected to their dream. And, and I, I use this um, quote, dreams, decisions, disconnect. Those three words, dreams, decisions, disconnect. I use myself as an example. My dream is to live until I'm 104 so that I can be a wonderful great grandmother. My decisions to eat fast food at my desk while I work disconnects me from my dream. And I think it's an important question for everyone listening to ask yourself, what am I doing that is disconnecting me from my dream? And even a better question, is everything, even though things are related to the music industry, I could be doing this and it's related to the music industry, is it connected to my dream is a more important. Because you and I know that we can be doing a lot of things in music that may not be directly connected right. to our goal. Right. And so I really, you can be really busy doing a lot of stuff in the music industry, and it may not be directly connected to your specific goal. So, you know, I just encourage your members to get started. And we, the, the, uh, we do mentoring. One-on-one -on -one mentoring. Think of Global Songwriter Connection as your manager and your publisher, whether it's a songwriter manager or an artist writer manager, and being your publisher, developing you while, you're, while we're working to find a fit for you. Some of you, most of you will not be ready. You will not be ready for the real publishing deal, nor are you ready for a real label deal. You may think that you're ready. And that's a good thing. I want you thinking that you're ready. That, that causes you to show up. And I love that. I love that. And I always celebrate wherever you are in your process. But we really help you. I call it positioning you to succeed. We want to position you in your best possible light. And, and, and the, the truth of the matter is the joy of my job is everyone is uniquely different. The challenge of my job is everyone's uniquely different. There simply is no cookie cutter, one size fits all plan of action for everybody. I want money, 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 money. That's for the love of money, yeah. Money. Uh -huh. And, you know, Money, first of all, why is money important to a songwriter? I think it's important for them to understand the emotional impact of when you are paid for your music. The emotional impact for it, it's not just about paying your bills. It's about the, emo the way you feel when you get paid um, for your um, songs. And what that is, is it's called validation. It validates. It, it's like when you go to work and you get your paycheck at the end of the week for your song that you wrote. And it's validation of a job well done. So many of you have been working basically for free. So here are many different ways I'm going to share with you. Uh, and it's Roger Barrett. It's Roger Barrett, his song, Money, Money, Money. I love that song. And I want you to begin... Uh, Thinking a lot of times, I hear songwriters say, "Well, it's not about the money for me." That is because, by nature, songwriters are the most giving people in the world. If people win the lottery, I wish it was songwriters, because if songwriters had money, it wouldn't be very long they would have given it all away. So, if they got money, everybody has money. Right. So. You're, the reason you're, by nature, usually so giving is because you are a flow of the music. You are open, which means you are receiving and flowing with the music. So it's by nature. But I want you to turn that around. I really want you to start saying, it's about the money. It's about the money. 
I want to be validated for a job well done. I want to be paid for doing a great job. I want people to feel as if my music is worth paying me for to use it. I encourage my members in your local community, people are using music all the time. And I think I, I tell people, start it this way. Think local, regional, national, and global. Those are the four levels of marketing. Local, regional, national, and global. Start. It's important that you start locally. A lot of people want to start globally. Right. You're not ready yet. You're going to make some mistakes along the way, mm -hmm. negotiating these deals, learning to speak, learning to communicate. You're going to go through some icky, wicky, bonky, wonky situations that you may want to call me and say, hey, this is feeling really weird. How do I get over this when it comes to being paid for your music? It's because most of us are not good at receiving money for our music. And we have to, we're good at giving. But we're not good at receiving. Very so <laughs> began looking locally for opportunities for your music. Are there corporations that are creating training videos, online training videos that your music could be used in the background? If so, that is a corporate one-time flat fee. They would send you the videos and you would create the music score. Somebody like you would they would pay you five, eight hundred to thousand dollars and then you would sign off. They would own that. That's called work for hire. They would own that and they would use that to train their employees nationwide. There is a lot of corporations doing online trading videos due to the high cost of travel and so forth, and also trying to create branding consistency within their corporations. What about jingles? Local furniture companies, carpeting companies, flooring companies, pest control that companies. That was my first job. I wrote a jingle for a plumbing company online. There you go. Right. .com. And that can either be a work for hire. Mm -hmm. And then if it goes to TV, you can even get a little back end on that contract. Again, there is no one size fits all kind of contract. What about um, when it comes to music within your local community, if you're a performer like you are, um, and it, even not, you can do writer's rounds kinds of things. But if you're a performer, a lot of people just think about the bars, performing in the bars. What about performing in gated communities? There are a lot of gated communities, and these people are doing fundraisers to where you, they've got these clubhouses mm -hmm. to where you can be performing, generating income. In addition, apartment complexes have community clubhouses and are providing entertainment more and more to keep and retain their clientele because every time somebody moves out of an apartment, it costs them money. They've got to put new carpet. they got to paint the walls. they got to fix and repair the plumbing. they got to... It's cost a lot of money. So they would rather retain their clientele, their their um, residents. So they're often providing once a month family night in their community clubhouses. So that's another way to generate income. Um, with your music, as far as writing just your music, there are also, and or performing, there are hospital fundraising programs, local fairs, festivals, your chamber of commerce, website is going to be one of the best locations for local business events. Mm -hmm. They usually have a monthly calendar of events. Now, when you make a call to try to get booked at that, you, you're equipped with information because usually you're either at your chamber of commerce, you're either going to have an event coordinator or an activity director. Those are usually the two titles used at all of these places an event coordinator, or an activity director. Mm -hmm. now, and if you got their name and you know that the Italian Music Festival is coming up on October the 15th, mm -hmm. then you can call and you can say, Carolyn, I understand that you're the event director for our community. I am a local singing, performing songwriter. I'm a local artisan. 
I love using the word artisan. I'm a local artisan, a singer, songwriter. Do you have your music already booked for this event? It just seems like music would be a great fit to go with the Italian festival. You don't, oh, as a local artisan, I'd love to be represented at your event. Do you have a budget for music for this event? It's very important that you ask if they have a budget. Right. Because sometimes we're offering, well, I'd love to come. I'll just sell CDs. We're offering to play for free when maybe they, they've got a $1,000 budget and they just haven't booked somebody yet. Or if they say, no, we don't have a budget for that, then you, can, then you begin to say, well, I really feel like while everybody's walking around, you know, eating Italian food and tasting that music would create a great background. Most Italian restaurants have great music. I'd love to, to be your traveling troubadour. And, you know, I could probably do that if I could have a little place for somebody to sell CDs or something for me. I could probably do that for you for about $200. Would that work for you and what you're doing? I just feel like it would add so much value to your event. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the sales talk that you would do. You you have to let them hear what value, tell them what the value is of what you bring to the table to your event. And then, you know, so making money, is, there are opportunities absolutely everywhere in local communities for making a living with your music. Fantastic. What, what about local film and TV? Most of these schools, colleges, have a tech department where they're doing videos and they're also doing film and TV. What goes behind those? Music, Music. all the time. When people think in their in your community about music, and I've said this for many years, but when people in your community think about music, they need to be thinking about you. If there's a local independent film coming to town, they need to know who to call at your Chamber of Commerce. Go to the Chamber of Commerce event and let people know that you do especially if you're a performing writer let them know that you do corporate events mm-hmm. house concerts fundraiser events backyard barbecues i mean there's so many things you know that holiday parties that you can do if you're performing and or as a writer of course you can be pitching those songs and that's a whole nother conversation 